So now let's have a look into the third option. So in this option, we will have a flexible lease with a minimum charge that will allow a variable usage of the warehouse space to a limit with additional requirement from the spot market. And in the previous two videos, we have solved the first two options. So if you haven't had a look, please have a look there before watching this video. So in the third option, our scenario is that we can have a lease option, flexible lease option, where we can have between 60,000 to 100,000. And for that, we have to make a upfront fee of $10,000 just because to have the ability to use flexible warehouse space between 60,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet. If we have a demand above 100,000, we have to go again for the spot market. And for this 60,000 to 100,000 square feet, we will pay $1 per square feet. Okay. And other things remains the same as in previous cases. So let's have a look how it works. So this is our setting. And if you want to know how we come to this setting, please have a look into the previous three videos. So now we are having the same decision tree and here we will have the same demands and the same prices. Okay. The only difference from the previous scenario is that previously we had to lease 100,000 all the times. But now if we have below 100,000, then we will actually can have that, right? Because we can go for 96,000 or 64,000 because we now have a flexible limit from 60,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet. But our upper bound is 100,000 square feet. So whenever we have more than that, we have to go for spot price, spot market, okay? So for revenue calculation, you will see that we followed the same approach. So we have our demand multiplied with the revenue that is 1.22 pars demand sold. So we just get the revenue from there. And if we scroll down, the balance will be same as they're calculated here already, but just to double check, you see all these are multiplied, all the demand values are multiplied with the revenue. By the way, just to remind you again here, we are actually solving the second period in the decision tree solution. When we form the decision tree, we start from the first period, but we need, when we solve the decision tree, we start from the last period, okay? So this is this second period. And actually it is the third period in theory, but the second period in practice, because we assume that we make all the payments or we receive all the payments in the beginning of the year. And this makes our life easy for the calculation, right? And for cost here, so first one is for the lease. How much are we getting from lease? So this is what we are getting from lease and multiply with $1 because we pay $1 per square feet. Plus how much are we paying for the spot market? So this is what we pay for a spot market multiplied with a spot price, respective spot price, right? And then if you just scroll down, you will get the values. And if I just double click here, just to double check, so you see, we are buying 64,000 from lease, so multiply that with one, and then we are buying zero from a spot market, so that's why we multiply this with the spot market price, and that will be zero. And for profit calculation, we will just deduct the cost from the revenue, and then we get all our profits here, right? So this is the initial profit solution for the prior two, okay? And then we move here for the prior one calculation, so for the period one, as we can see here, these are our situations, right? So here are our demands and here are our, our prices. And before we do the calculation, we actually have to bring the expected profit from the period two to period one. And so to do that, what we do is we have the probability of 0 0.25 for all of them, for all the nodes generating from period one for period two we have a probability of 0.25. So that's why we multiply 0.25 with all the expected profit. So here, these are the profits for period true, which were generated from our period one, this node, the first node of period one. And we were using the scholars to refer to the four nodes that generated from each of the period one nodes, okay? See that, okay, all the blue colors are added up here. Okay, all the orange colors are added up here and all the greens are added up here. Okay, so it should be like that. And then to convert, so these values here, these are the expected profit that we bring from the 
future period, so from period two to period one. And to really bring them to period one, we have to consider the discounting factor, which is 10%. So for that, we have to divide these values by 1.1 to get the present value of the future profit on period one. So present value of the period two profits on period one, okay? And then we could actually drag this and then you will have the same values, okay? So all these values are just divided by 1.1. And here we want to see how much actually we are getting, how much of our warehouse space we are actually getting from the lease and how much we will buy from the spot market. So when we have 120, then actually we will still, our maximum limit is 100,000. So that's what we are buying from the lease, okay? And 80,000, it is within our limit of 60,000 and 100,000, so we could go for that one. But when we reach our maximum limit, then we had to buy 20,000 from the spot market, right? So now for the calculation of the profit for this period one, so first what we will do is we will multiply our demand with our revenue from here to get the revenue. And then we will deduct our warehouse value that is leased at one, okay? So if you want to be really more perfect, then you should put a one here, just to indicate that, okay, our warehouses are leased at price one, so we multiply with one, okay? And then we have to deduct the spot market. So these 20,000, we buy from a spot market, and the price is here, the respective price, so we multiply with that one. And plus what we get from our period two cash flow, so that is here this value here. So we, after converting it to the present value, this is what we get from the future period to our current period. So we have to add that up as well. And then if we just drag it, all the equations are in place. So just to double check again, you see we do the same thing. First part is the revenue part. The second part is the lease cost. So we deduct it. And the part after that is the spot market cost. We deduct it. And then we add up our present value from the future period, okay? And then we come to our period zero here, okay? And here our demand is 100,000 and this is our price. And our expected profit would be the profit that we made here in period one and we have to bring them back because they have a probability with 0 0.25, so we have to multiply with that. So to do that, you see here, we have 0 0.25 multiplied with cash flows, expected cash flows, okay? And then we press enter, and then here to bring this cash flow one period back, we have to divide it by the, we have discounting factor. And to do that, we will divide it by 1.1, okay? And this is our net present value, the future cash flows. So but in this period, actually, now we have brought the future cash flows from period two and period one, both of them to period zero, okay? But now we have to add it with the cash flow of the period zero itself. So to do that, first we calculate the cash flow of the period zero. So we multiply the demand with the revenue here, okay? And then we deduct the cost. So here we are having 100,000, so we will multiply it with one. So because we pay $1 per, per square feet. So that's why we, are, we have just put here the one, one, 100,000 value. And then we add our present value of the future cash flows up to period zero. So we added with it, okay? And then this will be our profit. But if you remember, when we said that we will have a flexible lease agreement for warehouse space, where we said that we could use between 60 to 100,000 square feet any time we want. So for that, we had to pay $10,000 as an upfront payment, okay? just to be able to use the warehouse space in a flexible manner. So we have to deduct that from our, because this was our expense and this is our profit. So we have to deduct this 10,000 from this profit so that we get our net expected profit at period zero for the decision of having the flexible lease. So now actually we can compare all these three options and then see which one is actually the best one. So as you can see here, if we buy all the space from the spot market, our profit net present value of our future cash flow for the next three years is 5,000. If we go for 100,000 square feet for three years, fixed lease, then our expected profit from the future three year 
cash flow is 38,000. But if we go for a flexible lease, we will be able to use between 60 and 100,000 square feet. Then we actually make a profit of 46,000. So by now we see actually the third option is the best one. Okay, so that's how decision tree helps us to make strategic decisions. The key point from decision tree is that uncertainty about demand and other economic factors should be included in financial evolutions of supply chain designs. Mm -hmm.